All right, y'all, it's time for me to stop um, pushing back this video um, because, yo, we need to pay our respects to a couple of wrestling greats. We finna get into all that, y'all, but first, intro. Yo, what is good, fam? Bam, it is your boy Jason JV saying welcome to another, um, I guess, vlog video. Actually, this won't be a, really a reaction or a review or anything. Um, as you can probably tell from the title down below, and given the uh, subject matter of this video, um, this was a video I was planning on making ever since I did the uh, the Bob Barker tribute video. Um, I want to talk about a couple of wrestlers, you know what I mean, that we just lost not too long ago. Uh, starting off with uh, Terry Funk, who uh, you know passed away at the age of 79 years old. Didn't quite make it to 80, but a hey, 79 years. I mean, that's that's still a long time, you know, all things considered. Um, so you know, Funk did get to live you know a long, full life for the, for the most part. Uh, Terry Funk, he's one of those dudes, man. That I mean, he was one of the most entertaining wrestlers of all time in my opinion you know what i mean um now i'm not gonna sit here and act like like i was always a fan and it's nothing against terry funk it's just i just never really got to see too many of his matches the only um match or really storyline that i got to see him participate in was back during the attitude era when he teamed up with uh, Mick Foley, who was doing the whole um cactus jack run um during the attitude era Back in 98, this was leading up to a tag match uh, that the two of them were in with uh, the New Age Outlaws, uh, Road Dog Jesse James, and Badass Billy Gunn. Um, at WrestleMania 14, it was the um, it was a dumpster match, you know, and pretty much all the rules were out the window. The only way to win, you had to get uh, both of your opponents from the opposing team into a dumpster uh, in order to win. <laughs> It's not the most technically sound wrestling match, but it's definitely one of the most entertaining matches. Um, if you got access to the WWE Network, or if you have WrestleMania 14 on some kind of physical media, VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, whatever the case, hey, do, do yourselves a favor and go watch it, man. That that dumpster match with the Outlaws and Mick Foley and Terry Funk, who they try to push as Chainsaw Charlie, um, with, but it didn't work out because... Everyone knew at that time who who it was. That was that was Terry Funk, man. There's, you know what I mean. There there was no um, mistaking that man for anyone else. Um, but yeah, man, that was I remember that match. That that tag match was was one of the gnarliest matches I've ever seen, and uh, especially when um, uh, when both. Um, spoiler alert. But still, I highly encourage y'all to go watch that match. That match is entertaining as all hell. But, uh, yeah, spoiler alert. Uh, uh, Mick Foley and Terry Funk, they do win that match. And Funk is just going crazy. He's going insane. Just laughing his ass off and everything. And, yeah, man, it's just... <clears throat> it, was, it was... Man, <laughs> he definitely brought in a lot of memorable moments. Um, so yeah, and I, I, I gotta watch more Terry Funk match, because the only other match, too, I remember watching, but this was, uh, later on after the fact, when I got, um, the WrestleMania Anthology box set, um, I did watch Terry Funk's match at WrestleMania 2, um, to be fair, I only watched that match a few times, I don't really remember too much about that match, uh, the WrestleMania 14 match, I, I watched that, <laughs> man, like a, like a, shit ton of time so i i remember that match you know perfectly well uh especially because it took place during you know to, in my opinion one of the greatest if not the greatest era of all time in wrestling and that is the attitude era um so yeah man rest in peace terry funk you know what i mean he definitely will be missed you know what i mean definitely a legend um i'm not sure if he's a hall of famer um i'm gonna have to look up and see if they ever inducted him into the Hall of Fame while he was still here. I, I'm pretty sure they did, but, you know, my memory is not the greatest, so I'll definitely look into that. Um, but now, um, I, I want to get into the whole Bray Wyatt situation. 
Now, I never really realized how young Bray Wyatt was. I didn't realize that Bray Wyatt is actually two years younger than I am. Um, if you look at me and him, you, you would think he's the older one. But, uh, no, he's he, he was actually um, born uh, the same year as uh, one of my close friends from the neighborhood, from my old neighborhood, um, was and everything. So, you know, that kind of really puts things into, into perspective for me. But um, Bray Wyatt, when he um, when he first did that whole what is it like that like that crazy backwoods character and everything, I thought yeah man, I thought man, dude finally found his footing, he finally found his character, and then when he took it to a whole nother level with the whole fiend character, I was like man, that that that's gonna be awesome, that's gonna be dope. But then of course you know we all know the whole story, what happened with that character and. And everything you know the piss poor booking of that character man they they so so missed the opportunity of that that fiend character um one of my uh, i do have a memory of actually meeting bray wyatt this was back in 2015 this was when um they had wrestlemania in santa clara california not the san francisco bay area michael cole no it was santa clara california I should know because the area where they had WrestleMania, I worked in that area. You know what I mean? And plus, I live in San Jose, which is not, you know, very far from Santa Clara. As a matter of fact, San Jose is like the next door neighbor of Santa Clara. So there you go. Um, but I remember um, it was during WrestleMania week and they were doing the whole fan access thing and whatnot. Um, me and my cousin and then, of course, his kids were, were with us too at the time. We were hanging out downtown um at the hotel by by the hotel where they were where all the all the superstars were, were staying at at the time and um the hotel was literally like right next to a, a gym and so and so they had like this little alleyway between like the gym and the hotel area so we would see the wrestlers walking to and fro either going to the gym or going to a nearby restaurant or something i remember seeing um dustin rhodes um this is when he was doing his gold dust run I believe this was the middle of his last Goldust run with WWE. And I remember seeing Cody Rhodes, uh, too, at the time. And um, met Wade Barrett, met Damian Sandow, um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who hung out with us for a little bit. Jerry King Lawler hung out with us for a little bit. And then, of course, there was Bray Wyatt. Dude hung out with us for a little bit. And um, I managed to get his autograph and everything, and he was such a cool dude. Uh, one, but one of the, the coolest things that I got to witness firsthand, literally like right in front of me, was um, there, there was a, a little girl, right, who, who was a fan, and she wanted him to sign something, and the item, though, was, was not a Bray Wyatt item. It wasn't even like, um, <clears throat> uh, the, the, it wasn't even like, like a Wyatt family memorabilia. It was actually, a, 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 at the time, they called them divas. Um, it was a Divas memorabilia. I, I want to say it was an AJ Lee thing or something. But um, the but Bray was like, want me to sign that? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll sign it. It, it's, it may not be my thing, but you know what? I'll sign it. And so he, he signed um, that, that item that the little girl had anyway. Even though it wasn't really his thing, it, it still, he, he took the sign, the, the, yeah, time to sign that item for, for the little girl, which I thought was really the coolest thing um that dude did you know what i mean and he didn't have to do that he didn't have to do that um he could have easily had told that little girl hey man you're gonna have to go get a white uh a white family thing or a bray white thing you know in order for me to sign it but no he he actually signed that item even though it wasn't his item he still signed it anyway for that little girl to make her day you know what i mean which i thought was again was the coolest thing ever and that will always be a favorite memory of mine not 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 the fact that i got an autograph from him you know what i mean i mean forget about me man just again witnessing what he did for that little girl man that's just something that is forever burning my brain that i'll never forget you know um but yeah i i wanted to tell that story man because i want i want people to know just you know the kind of person that at least from my point of view from my perspective you know what i mean the kind of person that bray wyatt um is you know <clears throat> yeah, it's one of the one of the coolest dudes ever, and it's just it's really sad and unfortunate that 
man, dude, dude had a lost his life at such a young age. Uh, man, I don't care what people say. Some people say being in your thirties now makes you old and whatever. But 30s, no, I mean, if you really think about it, the overall scope, the overall grand scheme of things, being in your 30s, I mean, that's young. I mean, compared to someone to like like a Terry Funk who was just shy of meeting his, hitting his uh, his 80s, you know what I'm saying? 30, 30, 30, 30 some, 36 years old. I mean, that's, that's not old, you know? Heck, even in your 40s, even 40s is not old. Even though people say technically when you hit your 40s, it's like the midpoint of your life. But really, that's not, you know, the the mid part of your life. That's it's that's when you hit your 50s. So, I don't know. To me, in my opinion, <clears throat> anything like, even when you hit like your, your, like your late 30s and your early 40s, I mean, that's, that's still young. You know what I'm saying? Anywhere in your 40s, that's still young. 50s is still relatively young to to lose your life you know what i'm saying but so but yeah i mean <clears throat> terry funk uh, i mean i don't want to i don't want to compare or anything like that but like i said man the man got to live a long full life you know what i mean so it's not that you know his death should matter less or anything like that because it doesn't it's just that you know understand he got to live a full life Bray did it, man. Bray died at such a young age, and that, and I think that's why it's in, in a lot of people's eyes, it's it's more tragic and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> you know, but either way, man, rest rest in peace to both Terry Funk and thank you Terry Funk for all the memories and Bray Wyatt as well, man. Rest in peace, Godspeed, both of you, Godspeed, and Bray. Thank you for the for the awesome memories as well, man. Um. Yeah, man, it's the uh, the world of professional wrestling won't be the same. Um, both of these legends um, are a huge loss. You know what I'm saying? In the world of professional wrestling, and um, there, there will never be another Terry Funk. There will never be another Bray Wyatt. You know what I mean? Those guys are truly, truly one of a kind. You know what I mean? <clears throat> And, uh, yeah. All right, y'all. I mean, that's pretty much all I, I got to say about that. Um, it's pretty much my overall thoughts on, on the whole situation, man. I mean, it's, re it's sad. It's unfortunate. But, you know, one can, uh, one, one can rest assured and believe that both of these men are in a much better place, you know. <clears throat> or at least we, we can... We can pray that they are in a much better place, which I don't know. I I feel confident that that, that they are. They don't got to worry about nothing anymore. You know what I mean? They're totally at peace with the world. Totally at peace with themselves. You know. So yeah. God bless Terry Funk and God bless Bray White. And that's pretty much all I got to say, man. So until the next one, y'all have a blessed one. All right, peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, what's up with you, Jason JV? What up, Jason JV? Just sending love, peace, and blessings to you. JC, you are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, JV? I didn't see that last month after the next video. Who's saying what's up, JV? Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, if you're sad, if you're sad, if you're sad, if you're happy. Uh, don't be too happy. Don't be expecting shit. It's like doing curves all the time. So be ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe, tap the little bell, turn on the notifications, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.